All right, now I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Now we know orthogonal series. Now I'm going to look at the orthogonal series expansion. So step by step, I'm going towards Fourier series expansion. Okay, as I mentioned, Fourier series is a special case of orthogonal series. Given an infinite set of orthogonal functions in a particular interval as we have established it's very important to be specific with your interval when you're talk, talking about orthogonal series um, is that and you know from the previous segment we were discussing this as phi and n can be 1 2 3 all the way to infinity okay so so far we have done this there's nothing new over here now what I'm going to do is I will introduce a particular function a function I'm going to call this function, you know, fairly uh, convenient way to, you know, express this. And obviously, this particular function is also in the same interval. So the question is, um, can I express this function, which is y, is equal to fx as this one? Okay, some kind of a c naught phi naught x plus c one phi zero x plus. Let's go all the way to c n phi and x and I can actually as this is an infinite series I'm gonna have go to all the way to the infinity so now the question is okay I can maybe expand this in this manner but then the question is I have a bunch of these these coefficients okay it's c0 c1 cn all the way to infinity so can I find them if I can find them there's some for useful stuff that I can do with it if I can't find them well it's nice but it's kind of limited what I can ac accomplish with this Okay, so it turns out that actually I can go ahead and find these uh, coefficients. And the approach that we're going to take is, first we are going to take an advantage of, these are orthogonal, okay, that's the first thing I'm going to take advantage of. And I'm going to look at the inner product of orthogonal functions. If two function is orthogonal with each other, then the inner product of this, that is going to be zero, right? Do you remember that? So I'm going to take advantage of that and you'll see in a moment it will make sense to you. So let's look at this way. A to B. F of X times phi M of DX. Obviously phi is a function of X, right? It will be equal to. Now this is the left hand side. So basically I multiplied this phi M and obviously M is another letter. M, M can be N. M can be, right, one of them. So I'm just being very specific because I'll make a point momentarily. And if I take the same equation, the right hand side of it is going to look, look this way, right? C0, phi 0x times phi mx dx plus, again, a to b. Let's look at the second term. So it's going to be c1, phi uh, 1x, phi mx dx. That's the second term. And let's be consistent. Let's go and then let's have this one. A to be c n phi n of x phi m of x dx and I need to continue this all the way to infinity. Now I have a question for you. This is the question. Um, I said that these are orthogonal functions. Do you remember this is the definition of inner product? That's the whole point why I uh, mentioned these. I'm talking about this and this. So these two functions are orthogonal to each other and this is the definition of inner product and as I mentioned like a few minutes back the inner product of two orthogonal functions is equal to zero. So the entire right hand side of this equation will be zero, right? This will be zero as long as n is not equal to m, except where n is equal to m, okay? Because when n is equal to m, I'm actually inner producting the same uh, function and obviously they are not orthogonal to each other, right? So basically, let's write this this way. By orthogonality, ortho all the integrals at the right hand side will be zero except where m is equal to n. If m is equal to n, then I will get myself this one. Let's do actually take a look at this one then. A to b because that stays, right? So c, m. I can call n or m. I'm not differentiating those two, right? So I'm going to call this n because that's much more convenient. 
f y n x dx, right? So if, and then the cn is a constant, it's not a function of x, so I can take it out of the integral a to b phi n squared of x dx, right? So it turns out that the entire right hand side of this uh, this whole thing can be simply this term, and the left hand side is that then, okay? So let's equate that and, and try to find cn because that was the very first question I asked. Can I find these con constants cn? n can be 1, 2, 5, 10, right? So let's go ahead and write this. Let's write it in red because it's kind of important. a to b f of x. I'm simply copy pasting from the above. phi n of x. I wrote phi m, you see m, but m is equal to n as well, right? So I'm going to have consistency over here this way. dx will be c n. Now I'm writing right above line x dx and so from here I will get my cn as integral a to b f of x by n of x dx by integral a to b phi n square of x dx so this will be my cn values and you may um, recall this and I'm sure some of you did recall this. Did you realize we discussed this? This is the square norm, right? Right? Square norm. Why is it the square norm? Because there's no square root. If there was a square root, this is called the norm or the length, right? If this was a vector. For a function, it's called the norm of a function, but that is with the square root, so now it's called the square norm. All right? So this is something that we know as well. So we can actually write this in a more compact form now because this is actually the CNs I don't want to get too much ahead of me, but these CNs are Fourier series coefficients, okay? We'll cover these. And the cosine example that I solved in the previous segment will be related to the Fourier series as well. So I'm really focused on that end, all right? So we are going there real fast, okay? So let's write this in a more compact form. And that will be this. f of x will be summation from n is 0 to all the way to infinity cn phi n of x and I can write the cn as this way as well here a to b f of x phi n of x dx by the square norm of that particular function right so this is a very important uh, two equations we are going to use this right and left when we start the Fourier series you will see but before we start the Fourier series I want to close off the segment with introducing something called a weight function okay so basically I am expanding what I covered so far in this particular segment by adding another function to it a set of real valued not imaginary functions and these functions are very similar to what I've been using symbol wise is orthogonal with respect to a weight function and I'm gonna simply abbreviate this as the first letter of weight right in AB again I have to be very very specific in my integral because that will determine my boundaries of the integral right if I'm gonna write this theorem for you A to B w of x phi m of x phi n of x dx is equal to 0 m is not equal to n so let me uh, go back uh, before I, I, I will also write the cn part as well but before I go uh, too much ahead of myself let me go back and uh, discuss what's going on over here as we said in here if this uh, particular weight function is orthogonal all the right hand sides will be zero except except m is equal to n right so that's why we say in that if this is equal to zero obviously m is not an n then I will have myself a weight function which will be orthogonal to it okay and the cn values I'm looking at over here by the way you know so it's, I'm writing these very similar to each other um, the cn value can be find from this simply I added w nothing really uh, groundbreaking over here f of x w of x phi n of x dx divided by let's write this phi n square and let's define phi n square as basically a to b the 
this time around wx y n square x dx right it's a square norm there's no square root otherwise i would have a square root right so i you just simply plug this in usually we don't discuss this but i want to give an additional point you know this uh, you know i have an f of x right let's go up over here So here is why I started. I said that, that I can express a particular function by having this type of orthogonal series, which are given as this, expansion. And I showed you that I can write this this way in a compact form right here. And I said that the CN can be found from this formula. I went through the details. But now, one thing that, uh, you know, be careful about it is if what happens if f of x is orthogonal to the phi n? If f of x is orthogonal to phi n. So if that happens, what we'll have is we have a big problem because if f of x is orthogonal to the phi n, then this will be zero. So cn will be zero. So this is not going to work. Okay. So I want to write a very short uh, point about it. For all of this to work, my f of x must not be orthogonal to phi n of x. Okay. And if, if this is the case, if so, my cn will be zero, I just showed you. So basically, the cns over here is called the uh, orthogonal series expansion or generalized Fourier series. Thank you for watching the segment. I'll be back with the Fourier series. Thanks.